Honey guys, uh, I uh, thanks for watching, and I appreciate that people are actually requesting stuff uh, <coughs> on my channel. Um, if anybody has a request for me to for a tune that I've already played, if you want to hear it on the high pitched practice pipes or parlor pipes or the low pitched parlor pipes or the practice pipes or when I finally get back into playing the Great Highland pipes I have a couple different sets if you want to hear a tune that I have already played um, on a specific set of pipes that I've demonstrated or whatever go ahead and ask uh, it's somewhere in the, the time I more than happy if I have the time to do it today I for some reason I was con caught up in Sunday mode and so I'm uh, <laughs> I a day off I thought it was Sunday so I try to reserve my time so that I'm not late for church I'm not hyper religious but right now I think with the in the climate that we live in um, it's not a bad thing to be associated with a group of people that have a common interest in your betterment and welfare and, and this, that, and the other. So anyway, um, that's that. If you have a request, um, that uh, go ahead and ask and I'll do what I can to post it right now um, while I have the time. So anyway, uh, I made a mention the other day about having a set of uh, Chinese-made bagpipes that were completely unique to to something. There's something about them that's completely de unique to whatever I've seen. So <clears throat> there's there's that part. So what I'm gonna, I'm not going to jump into it right away. I'm gonna kind of go through what what I've noticed about these pipes that um, I actually like them they're plastic um, the chanter I've done the tooth check on it to see if it's wood or plastic or whatever the chanter now I think this is pretty cool I like the red hemp a lot on this and they're dirty so because I haven't bothered to clean them up. I'm doing this at somebody's specific request. I was going to do my uh, 440 Pakistani pipes first. So, but he seemed to be pretty eager to, or he or she, because I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so anyway, um, somebody made a request and they're the first person to have ever made a request that I can remember on my channel and which what kind of makes me feel good because it means I'm doing something right kind of right and I'm hopefully keeping your attention um, I have a little sound that I listen to in the in the background that um, at the reader it's a audiobook but the reader reads at a 6 8 cadence so hopefully that'll help with my cadence in the, in uh, the way I converse with everybody who watches my channel so that's kind of a technical thing I think is interesting um, for some reason I kind of thought it up myself so anyway this chanter it it it's plastic it sounds like wood and the sole on it is actually pretty cool I like that I you know, I gotta clean it up so but and this looks like it's modeled after an older style chanter and I do have um, my go-to read is Abador I'm not saying that is better than any other brand or anything like that. That's the read I know how to work with. That's simply that. And, and uh, I'm not saying they're better or worse, but the, I prefer 
Abador reads because I can I can pull out a brand new read and adjust it to my playing and I know exactly what to expect. So I I'm not saying that any brand is better than the other, but generally um, I would try out if if you're a beginning piper and you're self teaching or anything like that. Um, there's two things. If you're self teaching, you'll want to get a couple of different brands of chanter reeds till you find one because there's ridge cut reeds and there's molded reeds. Not molded as in like cheese, but molded is uh, they have a different shape than ridge cut reeds. So anyway, that's that. Well, we're talking about these pipes. So if you're self teaching, you know, try four or five different brands of pipe or chanter reeds so that you're you can figure out how to adjust your own reeds. And if you join a band or have an instructor, the instructor's gonna to uh, set you up with their favorite reed. Now my cats are both well, they're asleep. So anyway, this is the chanter. Um, kitty cats. If you see some sudden movement, that's the, the cats. I have these pipes because I was working so much in Kentucky. I didn't have a chance to mess around with these pipes. So this is an Avador molded reed. I have not adjusted it. It's still in its plastic bag. And it's pretty strong. It probably needs to be moist moist because it's been sitting in storage for a long time. My cats aren't even reacting to it. They'll react to this. I don't know how this sounds. The reed's a little bit deep. I should have prepared for this first. If I can't get this read to sound, I'll try one more read and then move on. He got on like that. I don't, I have this thing, I don't really like to change reads between pipes. <clears throat> I don't like to swap certain things between pipes, sets of pipes. Now these chanter reeds have been sitting for a long time in storage. I don't, I don't think they have an expiration date, but it might be just be that this chanter is a hunk of junk. That's one thing. So I've got a couple other chanters up here that we'll see. There we go. This one feels like a medium. It sits really deep in there, so I don't know. Okay, so this is a, a pretty old style, old fashioned style chanter. Just get here how flat that is. The cats are going, meow, kitties. <laughs> giving me the dirty look over the shoulder okay so it sounds it's really flat so okay so uh, 80% to 90% of everybody's not gonna like this 
chanter. So, but it's actually pretty good. This is a Pakistani chanter. Um, that it, I checked the finger spacing and it's actually pitched pretty low. Let's see. That's not good. So I have two notes that sound the same on this one. So that means it probably needs a different chanter or read. Now, this chanter is a Pakistani chanter from Sulshi in Sialakot, Pakistan. And this is, um, you've heard me, well, I'm going to take the sole off so it doesn't fall. This thing is heavy enough to break a toe if it drops off. It's just dry. So, this chanter is the way it was when I did my, is tuned the way it was tuned the first time I ever competed. And so, I don't know how it's going to sound now because I haven't played this thing in years. Now, my opinion, not that I actually know anything, I think having the soul on this would mellow out the tone. So, this is a good chanter, in my opinion. And with John extenders, um, <clears throat> that would sound okay. The Chinese one, I'm gonna have to mount the chanter to see. Um, this is the chanter. I'm just doing this so you guys can compare this Chinese chanter, which I'm not too terribly thrilled with. Um, this is a original Robertson chanter and it's good. The finger holes are all worn and everything like that. So. Okay, I like that one. And then, this is the Robertson replacement chanter. It's almost identical to it, but I don't, there's no name on it or any, well, there is a name on it, but my readers are over in my room. So, well, this one's sharper and brighter. Well, I keep this in mind. This one's brighter sounding. Now, this is the chanter from my very first set of packet, the very first set of bagpipes I ever bought. Um, it's from. Uh, well, I'm not sure where it's from. I bought it. it it's a standard Pakistani uh, chalice bagpipe chanter. And I played this for a long time before I got my first set of Blackwood pipes. Ooh. Do you hear how the broad... I don't know if these pipe the, these speakers... I'm probably over-torquing them. But... Low A on this is that broad. It's really a big low A. I still got most of the tape on here, but what, some of it's moved around, so. There's nothing 
wrong with the tuning on this chanter. Now, I have another one, the antique chalice chanters. And, well, um, that one, yeah, the, there's something different about it, and I don't like the way it sounds. And I'm not going to practice that. So, anyway, <clears throat> there you go. Um, now, this reed is sitting, sitting really deep in the, this Chinese chanter. Yeah, it's too deep. I'll try this when I get it mounted in a set of pipes. But I don't have any hope for it. Um, so that's that part. Uh, like a dummy. Um, I don't have one of my modern chanters out. Um, we can do that later. So anyway, <clears throat> I've got three chanters here that are fully usable. I got a chanter reed that needs to be eczema sized because it's closed up from being. I'm going to put it in with this. No, I don't want to mix them together. So there's that. Uh oh. So, give me a sec. I thought I had everything all planned out. So now you know what the chanter reads sound, what chanter reads, or what the chanters sound like. Because I am bringing that Pakistani one for the antique chalice ones. I'm bringing that set of pipes back to life. But that's not all we're talking about today. <coughs> hey, cat. Okay, so now, um, <laughs> I'm doing this on purpose, and I'm enjoying it, okay, so there. So anyway, uh, these Chinese bagpipes that I picked up um, came with this bag. If anybody knows what this tartan is, please let me know. But I think this tartan is really cool. So, and it's double layered inside and out, and it's stitched really well. And uh, I don't know, I like it. And the drone cords that came with it, I really like these. They're really long. So I might have to go and get some. So, there's that. See the pattern on that? Isn't that cool? I like these. So, let's see. What I did is I've got my balance tone drone reeds, but they're gray ones, and one's a black one for the tenors. So, because I'm not cannibalizing my other pipes just for this set of pipes because I don't know what they're going to sound like. So anyway, <laughs> the thing that was different about these pipes, now there's something with these pipes that's completely dysfunctional. And I don't, I, I looked at it and I tried to imitate it on my par parlor pipes. It's, it, it's not a workable system. So, this is, let's see if I can get it to refocus. The way the valve is set up, the blowpipe valve, totally non-functional. Um, it works, but 
the thing is, it restricts the air. It's pretty t stiff as far as blowing the air in. And then the next thing is, I tried setting this up because, you know, I was like, oh, that's a cool idea and everything. And it's not workable um, from my point of view. It doesn't seal as tight. Now, the cool thing about this is the pipe, pipe <laughs> bagpipe came with setup instructions. So all the parts are marked A, B, C, D. So you plug them together, you know, by the by the letters or their, you know, so just like a, a um, put together toy set. And this is actually pretty heavy. It's uh, I like the furls or the mount, whatever you want to call it. And everything is nicely hemped. This hemp is still good i might be able to play these today if i do it right i'm not sure yet because um i was looking amongst my stuff and i found a moose valve and i'm not going to show you it because it's kind of ugly because i used it for a long time and uh so there so here's this valve and this is heavy and the mount is heavy and you could use this for a weapon now for length normally what i do is i end up buying a different adjustable stock um to or a blow pipe to to fit me on that but the profile i if anybody can see the profile of the combing there that's okay now here we go. So we got our, this is a tenor with the, the correct part number on it. Okay. And I, me personally, now I, these are very slender profile drones. And you can almost see the casting line. There's a casting line, right? Well, but they're very shiny and they're very heavy and they're plastic. So, there they are. So if I pull these all the way out, now this is the, I have to tell you, I have never heard these drones. Never. So, and like a dummy, I don't have my hand handy. I got my hand. So I had never tried these before, ever. So I've got, what, a sixteenth of an inch on the drone. I'm actually excited about this. These are the Chinese drones. So I love, I like the slender profile. I like the drone cap. I like the slides. Now they're been sitting for a long time. The hemp is still good, perfectly good. I'm gonna have to get some brasso and clean the, the mounts and the slides and everything up. So here we go. I don't know how these are gonna sound. I. I never got a chance to to do it. Check these out. So this is a balanced tone gray uh, reed. Let's see. So what I'm checking for is now it's not going all the way in. There's not a ridge in there. I just had too much hemp. Now, balance tones, the way the instructions are, and I've messed with these, so the instructions are probably irrelevant. So, these are 
it's set pretty high and according to the instructions the drone reed is supposed to be kind of out like that and then according to tradition that's where you put the drone top now this is a tenor drone Which isn't going to work because I'm missing a cap. Excuse moi. Get a cat. <laughs> oh boy, oh good kitty. Okay, I thought I was prepared. I apologize. <clears throat> That's interesting. So. This is a black one, so these are a little harsh. They sound like, in my opinion, the the, the early balance tone drone reeds sound like cane that hasn't been broken in yet. A cane reed that hasn't been broken in. So they're a little bit harsh, and these are plastic. There. You ready? I'm kind of excited. Eh, tilt it off to one side. All right. <laughs> and these are supposed to be pretty harsh they don't sound bad <laughs> Now this, I haven't played this drone read in a long time, so. Plus I got it wet. Okay, fine, be that way. So just in case, those are balanced tones. This is an easy drone. I would mess with the crones, but I don't want to mess with them. So There's a reason why these are kind of in the bucket. So I don't think they sound bad. Grab the wrong box. Darn it. What do I got here? Here we go. Full set of grays.
Now, see, we're just having fun, okay? Put this in. Put it out to the end of the tenon. Let's try this one. Oh, that fits a little better. So, by my standards, <clears throat> the, these drawn reeds are, are worn out and easy, easy drawn reeds, I still haven't figured them out. So I'm not good at adjusting them in the, to, for me, what I think is not what may be factual, is when they absorb moisture, they change. Uh, by my experience, after a while, they're hard to play. So. Here we go. These, this is a gray. <clears throat> I haven't messed with any of the blades, uh, the tongues, on any of these. So here we go. Did air, did air, did air. Sorry, guys. I thought I had everything scienced out. I don't think they sound too bad. But that's just me and I'm So that's tenor number one, or tenor, tenor number B, see, tenor number B. Okay, so we'll put this all the way out to here. Now there might be something funky about the bores, which forces the, the tenon to, the reed doesn't, function like it's supposed to so I'm still excited about this you guys are gonna I don't know I'm officially calling this my ugly cup I'm not going to wash it until somebody complains about it that doesn't mean complain about it right away because I don't want to wash it I don't have a dishwasher now the hemp on this one is a little bit loose and I don't have any red hemp. But with these pipes, if they work out, you know what? I'm going to have to start buying red hemp. So here we go. And this is... Oh, no! I don't know what I'm going to do. They don't... There's, there's no letter on it. Oh, well. <laughs> This one's a little bit louder. I still like, the, you know, these are, to me, the profile is so slim and the kintails and the drum runs, I wouldn't be hugely surprised if these aren't a copy of the, those. So, there's that. You want to hear it again? This is the zero sum drone. Are you can hear it? It's a little bit buzzy. <clears throat> yeah, in my opinion, because I have set up cane drone reeds, and I'll do another uh, video on drone reeds, uh, cane drone reeds, because I, 
I know of one good hack for drone reads, especially if you have a grumpy one that does not want to play. So, here's the base drone. I'll make sure I got all my parts together for this. So, um, let's see. Oh no! I'm missing numbers again! Well, I better make sure. So, the tradition, as far as I know, or, you know, what everybody says, the top is all the way out. And then, and I don't know what you do about Fat Finger Bob, but, so we're doing... On the bottom joint, two fingers. That's what's supposed to look correct, and then you adjust your reads to fit. As far as I understand, I don't know. I've never been in the British Army, or Navy, or Air Force, or whatever. Uh, do they have Rangers? I don't know. In in the British Army. So, um, you know, th these things that the profile is so slim, you know, it, they're not ugly. There's no casting lines on them or anything. And, you know, they're, they sound like blackwood. I don't know what this plastic is. So, there's the drone top. I'm almost kind of ashamed because uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to put these together today and and play them. I don't know which chanter I'm going to use yet. So that'll change things around. But um, these are gray uh, balance tone reeds. So this is the bass. Sounds like Donald Duck. Whoa, the bore is different on this one. Okay. I prefer to use wax temp. Kind of a bummer. Wait a minute, what am I bummering about? This goes on the reed. I'm just excited to play these. Well, honestly, I'm excited, excited, excited. Um, hmm. I prefer wax. And that is actually significantly bigger. And what I do is I do a couple of anchor turns. Uh, roundy, 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 round. And then once I get the base cover on the drones, I do crisscross back and forth. Because, um, and I do that with my drone slides. Because that way you're having an even seal on there. And if you only just wrap it like this, you're going to eventually reach a point with some pipes where it's going to snag and, and what will happen is you'll try to mount the, the drone into the bagpipe and then at the end of the, the a tenon something will snag and you end up with a ball at the, the base of the reed and um, it dang that's really big what happens is you end up with a bunch of spacing between your uh, pipe mount or, or your joint if it's fully closed that's kind of unsightly and unprofessional not that I'm a professional piper I don't make any money pi piping I do this for the fun of it so you know I've had people ask me to instruct them and I, I direct them to somebody that I know oh, darn it Mm -hmm. 
I thought I was prepared, but I was so excited that I wanted to put these out here. Where's my wax? What'd you guys do with my wax? Kill my read. Okay. There we go. That's a little bit too far out. And here's a trick. I think I gave my, away my recipe for this. If the, on the balance tones, if it's too loose because you've been doing a little bit too much tuning, which is okay, that means you're working towards a goal. This wax, because this is pretty loose, all I do is draw a line. Just like that. Twist it on, and it's just enough to make everything tight. Here's the now, these are things that I've learned on my own. So, there's probably some pipe majors out there or other pipers who, who know a lot more than me. So, that's all I did. You can see it's bunched up a little bit there. But, beeswax is the my holy grail of, well, not really. of doing this. Almost. I prefer to have wax because it makes it more airtight. See, I'm doing the crisscross on this. Dun -dun -dun. At least it's not tapered, and it fits just about perfect. Now, this is dry hemp. It's not waxed. I prefer to use waxed because it doesn't change dimensions. Don't use your teeth. It's bad for your teeth, okay? And you're going to ruin your teeth, and then when you're my, my age, you won't have any teeth left. Okay, so don't. Don't. Do what you just saw me do, okay? So, don't do that. It's really bad for your teeth. I sound like my mom. I didn't have a dad growing up, so I don't know what my dad would have said. Probably would have laughed his butt off when I yanked a tooth out. I don't know, my dad... I know my dad now. Well, not 100%. I haven't spent... A whole week with him but he seems like a really mellow guy and my brothers my half they're not my brothers because we're so we had the same ears same hands uh, same nose and we're all pretty smart mostly um, <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> okay, red amp line, two fingers, all right, I have a really small mouth, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit this. <laughs> That's really cranky and grumbly, it sounds like a, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what these pipes if they work out they're going to be pretty cool for busky um my darn it i might have to do a break and join because my zip ties are in my bagpipe case and <laughs> that's where my David Nail, or 
<sighs> See, and I have to go back because I've got so many different pipes. They're my set that I use when I go to pipe band. And hopefully I'll be able to go back because summertime's coming and I have Thursdays off. So here we go. Um, flicked it a couple times. It's got good spacing. <laughs> I don't think they really well that's why I didn't use this set that's really weird So that sounds like a broken in cane reed, in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> I'm cheating. All this stuff, in case something goes wrong, I usually carry it with me when I go to competitions or anything like that. Okay, so this drone read actually matches the bass in my opinion <laughs> this is gonna be okay Sorry, all the weird animal noises. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a set. So, um, here we go. Uh, <laughs> are you ready for this? Um, I don't, I haven't done any, any experiments with this set of pipes. I never got a chance to play them. So, I'm going to see, and I'll probably have to do, oh, there's my wax that I was looking for. And, let's see. I got two bass drone reeds. But they're dry, and they're Pakistani. And then, that one needs some work. Look, I have a bazillion Pakistani reeds. There's a whole thing to do with, with these, and I'm not going to do that. It's not the purpose. So are you guys ready for the, the you've never seen this before mode? And I just realized. Um, hmm. I'm going to use utilize this. Ah, darn it. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to end this video here, but I'm going to join it back together when I'm ready for the next part. Because, <laughs> to me, this is going to be hilarious to other people. 
and I'm not making fun of the Chinese. As a matter of fact, um, I'm admiring their ingenuity, okay? So, um, there it is, and um, bear with me on this. I'm not entirely doing this on purpose. I didn't have this plan, but I didn't think about it. Because I got the request today, or yesterday, and I thought today was Sunday, so I wasn't planning on doing this. But now that, well, you know, I got the appropriate shirt that mostly matches my bag, mostly. And the really cool cords for it. And, you know, the drones don't sound absolutely defective. Um, let's see. Well, these are easy drones. And plus I've got two Crone um, tenors. So, if it, I have to match the bass drone. Because the bass drone's got that big bra sound. And, uh, well, the thing is, I have my phenolic uh, chanter on my drum runs. And I don't like changing that chanter out to other another set of pipes because uh, they have such a perfect sound for what they are. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these yet. So if they turn out well, um, I'll probably use them for busking because if somebody attacks me again, like happened before, um, I won't be hugely worried about dropping these on the ground and defending myself. So, uh, un momento, because I need to get my drone plugs and everything like that together so that I can show you the uniqueness of these pipes and the ingenuity and the inventiveness. And so, I'll be back in a sec. Well, uh, I'll be back in a YouTube second, okay? So I'm going to sit here and watch my clock for uh, 15 seconds. Maybe less. Five, four, three, two, one. Poof. Okay, I'm back. Um, wow, that was the... The, the quickest 15 seconds of my life. <laughs> okay. So, now, if the blowpipe, I don't know if you can buy these. Okay. But in general, just so you know, and this is, uh, I should have looked it up before and it's kind of ugly. I've checked it out. It's still pliable and everything. This is a moose valve. And this is the dowel for the moose valve. And you turn this. And this one's stuck. So I have to limber this one up. This might not work today. But you turn the dowel inside the valve there we go to adjust the shape and this fits inside of your blowpipe stock I'll do this afterwards or while I'm showing this but uh, it's called a moose valve, like the big animal that you associate with Canada, okay? This thing, if you're doing Pakistani bagpipes, <coughs> some of the valves are really good. Um, they're pretty, <clears throat> excuse me, they've worked out some pretty creative ways to do this. 
Now, on what I have here, you've seen this valve, and it seems to work okay. But it's not entirely tight. It's pretty creative. I don't think there's anything wrong with the idea. So, are you ready for it? And I've never seen this before. I think this is totally hilarious in some ways. I'm not make, making fun of the Chinese. I am admiring their ingenuity. Okay. So, um, the bag is basically a hot water bottle. And I don't, it's been sitting for so long, I, I haven't even checked it or anything, a lot of this stuff. I'm doing this because this is like me opening this up for the first time. So what I did is I put my drum, my uh, stock uh, plugs in, which if you're bagpiping, uh, you need to get some drone plugs, period. They're mandatory. And if you're doing the small pipes or practice pipes or anything like that, the um, the it helps learning tuning. Now I just want to make sure that you you know, okay, on this, I'm enjoying my time with this. So there you go. Yeah, it's sideways. Part number D, D, I'll dip this way, D and D, see, go together for assembly. That's why I don't need the instructions for this, because I already have the letters. It was a little confusing because some of the letters dried up and fell off. So this bag has been sitting for a long time. But it's been in Kentucky. It's still pretty pliable. It's got the um, cornstarch on it, which kind of feels weird. I don't know what a striking would be like this on this because every bagpipe bag um, that I've used or prefer to use, um, I don't know if this is going to be like a rubber balloon. I don't know what it's going to be like. I prefer stiff bags personally. Um, I've only ever used Banatine bags and that's not because it's my favorite or my least favorite. It's because that's all I've ever used. So there's my ugly cup. I'm not washing it. So we're going to try the Chinese. Um, you know, this reminds me of those strong men. Things like, uh, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger did it, but one of the bit famous bodybuilders used to, you know, blow up water bottles, and, you know, on stage, and then blow it up until it popped. So I feel kind of like, I mean, well, I can't join that fraternity, because I've lost a lot of weight. I used to weigh about 180 pounds, and then with all the stress and everything, I'm down to 161. I've gained one pound back. I would like to be at 175. I only want 14 inch biceps, but I want my my forearms to be big and I'm, because I was a construction worker, chest work wasn't that big of a deal. So anyway, let's see how this works. It's, it smells like it just came out of Walgreens. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Ah, it's got a hole in it. Right there. That's kind of a bummer. The good thing is, um, I can mount these drones. I don't know how that hole got there.
okay, it's got leaks in a bunch of places. So that's kind of a disappointment. Um, hmm. I'm going to cheat. Now I'm going to use one of my other sets of pipes and hemp the drones up because it doesn't matter on this. But looks like I'm going to have to. The drone stock dimensions all look standard Scottish. So. Um, darn. Okay. So. That's my unique surprise. So. I hope you guys are all. What the heck? Um, it's got a hole in there. Darn it. I was so busy back then in, in Kentucky that I don't know if I came up with the hole and just kind of like shelved them. But the drones don't sound bad. Um, probably with some aggressive uh, balance tones. These would probably sound a lot like my drum runs. Or kintails. They're kind of the same sound. The same bore almost. As far as I know. Same profile. And the profile of these is... Actually pretty elegant. So, um, and not dissimilar. So, let me get my drum runs out. And we'll see how they sound. Um, I might, I'll figure out what to do on that. So, I'll be back. We know that these got a hole in it. The blowpipe valve design. Maybe you guys want to look at this one more time. Which actually is pretty cool. Because that means I have a valve for another set of pipes. So, so that works. And the only reason why I couldn't get these to work is because they have leaks. Now, the hemping... For the drone stocks, is actually pretty good. Um, obviously, I couldn't find. See, that's my Mason's twine that I was using before. Oh, what the heck! That orange twine, Mason's twine, I can break that no problem. So, I was excited and hoping I was going to play these up. But honestly, the way this bag blew up, um, strike-ins would be really difficult with this. And the, the bag itself, there's not enough support. So, the Chinese had, were on the right track, except for that the rubber... is not stiff enough to support the bag or to support the drones the the player of the drones would have a lot of trouble striking in or being relaxed or being able to inflate the bag to keep it at pressure without sand sounding the drones and that's the only problem with this rubber in my opinion because i'm not a professional this is just my opinion that's probably why rubber has never been used that I know of, except for in this case, for drones, because it's too 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 pliable. You know, I've never set played a set of pipes with sheepskin, so I don't know how close sheepskin would be to this, but I would think that the, um, a purist. <clears throat> The, the rubber, because of the way it resonates and its flexibility, it would probably dampen the tone. Um, I think uh, uh, the backpack bag, to me, in my humble opinion, ignorant opinion, the backpack bag is kind of like a a sounding board. And I know your the piper's arm wrapped around the bag uh, would dampen some of the resonance. So it doesn't... It's like... If you played a pure sheepskin bag, you still had the arm on there damping 
the resonance. Now, I, well, I forgot. I did play a set of uh, sheepskin ba hide bag, or a set of pipes with a sheepskin bag in Southern California, and the the difference is <clears throat> to the piper is from the chanter reed to the drones and or from the chanter to the drones you can feel the drones and the chanter talking together so um if you're wearing earplugs or anything like that if you can't hear that the, everything's in tune you can feel it so i just barely remembered that and i only did that once and i was like well that's pretty cool but sheepskin uh okay i'm a lazy piper when it comes to stuff like that so anyway uh let me set these up on a different set ah man i really wanted to so now i don't know what to do because right now i i can't afford to buy anything until i get back to work but i'll i'll get a pipe bag for these I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to get an extra large bag because, um, well, maybe not extra large, but a large because, um, it, in my opinion and experience, the bigger bags are easier to, because I'm not doing a band strike in when I do busking, but they're easier to blow tone and control things. So darn it. I was really excited about that and everything looks standard so I should be able to just uh, bolt everything together and uh, I shall return. Well. I, uh, <clears throat> because of the hole in the bag of the Chinese, uh, uh, bagpipes, um, uh, I decided, well, what I was going to do is my German drones. I definitely need to buy another bag for these Chinese bagpipes. And I've been noodling around with them a little bit and I kind of wanted to do it. Well, this is the first time you and I will hear these together. And then I was like, you know what? That's a bad idea because then I'll end up with a bunch of dead air. So, um, I tried four or five different reads for this Chinese chanter. So, and it's, it's junk. But the hemp is still good, so I might... Try to get the hemp off it and then scroll it onto a bobbin because I like that red a lot. Oh, it's coming off easy. So, the Chinese chanter, well, um, darn it. I'm a hoarder, so when I die, somebody's going to find it and, and they're going to be all, oh, what's this for? Let's see. It. Oh, it's crap. Throw it in the fireplace. So, Sorry, Chinese guys, there for whatever reason, um, that in, I'm not a pipe maker, whatever reason, this chanter does not work. Probably the cone is too broad or something. I don't know. I can't speculate because I'm not a, a bagpipe luthier. So, what I did is I took the soul off of this chanter because I really like the soul on this chanter because it's it's bright and shiny and it's conservative at the same time and so what I did is I took the Pakistani chanter which I mean there's nothing wrong with it all of the you know bagpipes you know cock of the walk it's supposed to be bright noisy and gaudy cool you know so I took the the sole off of the, the Pakistani pipes which you, you know the carving is good on it and everything there's no burrs or anything and 
the chrome plating is high quality. So there's nothing wrong with this. And so what I did is I took the sole from the Chinese pipes and see how cool that is? That's kind of like Art Deco, you know? And, and now this is the original chanter that came with my soul sheet bagpipes, the ones that everybody disliked. Well, the tuning on this chanter is really good. Now, I've had to adjust some of the, t the, the notes, but just so you guys know, when I played this chanter at the Queen Mary, this is the very first time I ever competed, and I didn't know the drill at all. I even asked, had, had to ask the judge what in the heck to do. I was wearing a Pakistani kilt. I was wearing, uh, I can't remember, just cheap hack stuff. I went up and competed. And I played the 79th Farewell to, to Gibraltar. But I, that story is in another video back there. I hardly ever delete anything. So I know without a doubt because the judge even commented that even though the pitch was really low on this chanter, my tuning was good. It was just way lower than he expected. So, I glued the sole, this Art Deco sole, which is really cool, on this uh, um, chanter because I'm going to use this chanter now, the thing you need to know about this chanter, because it pitches so low, the bagpipes that it came with, when I tried to compete in Ventura, to, in order to pitch with this chanter, I had to, uh, even, in, I use Balanced Tone Dream Reads, because they're the ones that work for me. Well, I had to use drone extenders to pitch down, to, well, the, even at the Queen Mary, I had to pitch the drones down to fit this ch chanter. So, now, with these drones, I don't think I've, had, I've got a problem with them. So, uh, here we go. Now, I do need to get a set, a new set of drone reeds. And I need to get a bagpipe bag. I've already got the stocks, so I don't have to spend any money on the matching stocks. Um, the stocks are the the next size smaller metric version of 13 sixteenths, as far as I can tell. Now, 13 sixteenths in my 13 sixteenths bore, in my opinion, is the best bore, period. Because I've played other pipes with the smaller bore, and it because of the airflow around the drone reeds, in my opinion, it disturbs the the blade on the drone reed. And I it's probably different with cane reeds, but the modern reeds, in my opinion, work better with the 13 sixteenths um, uh, bore in the drone stocks. I, that's just my experience. I am not a professional. I've only been piping since 2000, and you've got guys that have been piping since, I don't know, the Stone Age. So they know more about it than me. I'm just stating my opinion from my experience from working on so many different sets of pipes. So, uh, what, what's the, the, there's a French word for it, and when I need to say it, I can't think of it. The, uh, something, something, de resistant. So anyway, um, guess what? I just spent the afternoon, um, you know, I was going to comment on this. You know, draw, oh, there they are. Zip ties. Okay, zip ties. These handy little things that are always in the way in the toolbox out in the garage. Because I work on cars. And, um. Zip ties, zip tie, zip tie. Always in the way. Uh, when you never need them or anything like that. And as soon as you need them, you can't find them. 
So I bought two packages. I'm going to leave one package on one side of the house, and I'm going to leave one package on the other side of the house. And I know I got a third package of zip ties somewhere. So, anyway. Um, well, I took my, my drum rings apart, which I know I said I wasn't going to do. But I really, 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 really wanted to hear these pipes. And um, I haven't fitted a, a chanter reed. But just to, to so you can hear the drones, I don't think I'm going to have to do any uh, drone extenders with these. Um, and because, you know, we got B-flat chanter reeds now. Or uh, drone reeds now. So... Anyway, now I've only lit these up once to, you, you know, do the normal adjustment. And so, um, tell me what you think about these. Now, these sound like the old-fashioned cane reeds when you, when, when you would first put them in. They're real crackly. I happen to like that sound. These will be pretty awesome for, uh, in my opinion busking and then once I get this tuned up I might play uh, something later but so we know that uh, hot water bottles don't work for drone bags because the tiniest pinhole the more you blow the bigger the hole gets and you know I remember when I was a kid in elementary that you know they take those patches and then clamp it and set it on fire I love the smell back then um that was in kindergarten well you know the, the red yellow or the red uh uh, uh bouncy balls for you know uh, whatever it's been a long time so are you ready for it they they're you know sound is what you interpret it as i like the sound because I have experience with the sound and I know exactly what I can do with this sound and it would be awesome to hear it in an echo chamber I can't find any echo chambers in Ogden I found one bridge where there's almost never anybody there so I might post there and it's not very populated so I can set up my recording equipment I just use a camera a TP camera that seems to translate the drone sound the same no matter which set of pipes I play so it's kind of frustrating on that I need a better camera yeah, look this is all stuff that I'm gonna get on my own I don't need anybody donating stuff or anything like that what I what I would like to have is civil consideration for different sounds of different bagpipes i mean you know asturias galicia which by the way and see i'm in rambo mode <clears throat> i've had somebody invite me to go and live in asturias and he watches my videos and i'll tell you what there's been a couple of times the last four months i've really thought about it and then i've had somebody invite me to go to galicia and to spain espana and I've had somebody else um, invite me to go somewhere else. I can't remember where it was. Um, but, you know, that's a compliment. And, and I'm not the... Well, they say don't say anything bad about yourself. Okay, I'm a fair piper for somebody who likes to experiment. And I like different sounds of different bagpipes. Now, I tune the Scottish... The, the scale to the the chanter what the chanter resonance works so anyway here we go and you know uh, probably a little bit of a scene but i i've always used my a finger to plug because it's easier for me to uh release the drones so uh, and you know what you know how I was complaining about the other set of pipes being heavy on the shoulder? These are heavier, but they're longer through here. So the, the mount, which I still need to clean, 
doesn't sit on my collarbone, which is is pretty cool. So, and I still have my other set that I haven't had time to, I haven't made the time to set up. So here we go, and th these are the Chinese drones. So there it is, long video, lots of parts, um, and here we go. I'll say it one more time if you want. What do you think? I, I'm really, I really, really, really like the sound of these drones. So I need to get a bag and I can use these other, and now here's your proof that these are the Chinese drones, okay? It says F and F, well you can barely see it. F and F, so that you know how to put them together. And I don't know <clears throat> if anybody watches this video to this point. Thanks for watching and thanks for your patience. And um, I'm gonna tune up the Pakistani chanter that I plan to use because with these drones, I'm not gonna need to use any drone extenders. I will need to buy another set of drone reeds. Um, if they'll even sell them to me anymore after this video, but you know this, they're indestructible. They're plastic of some sort. They got that big bra sound, <laughs> which is gonna carry like crazy, and um, yeah. So uh, that's it for now. I'm gonna see if I can tune up this this chanter. To, to these. Um, I don't know. Let me see how far off this is. <laughs> Guess what? All I need to do is put a chanter read and tune it up. Maybe. I haven't done any carving to this read. I really, really, or ch chanter, I really need to uh, um, clean it up. Because it's, it's got kind of a greedy feel to it that I don't really like. My cats are going to go nuts. Let me see. Okay. I'm excited. There's the reed that worked. So, I'll clean it up. Maybe I'll post something tonight. Um, my neighbors are out in the backyard... These definitely, oh man. Now I want to, this joint, I don't really like the way it sits. And I really need to, to leave, should I leave the, the should I leave the assembly numbers on there? But then that won't let me clean them up. So, ah, catch 22. And these are sitting a little bit low. But, you know, that can all be scienced out. So, there it is. That's the Chinese drones um, for uh, another person who requested it. And I don't mind doing it because I wanted to hear these too. And they get that big crackly sound to it. Um, unfortunately, for some people, 
um, it might destroy their reputation for the sweet sounding uh, band pipes and well you know I would say sorry except for uh, I'm not because I'm gonna do as long as the tuning is good and the drones work and the tuning works it doesn't matter which pitch it is I had somebody who was like oh the, the oh, well, my my uh, high-pitched ones they're like that pitch is just kind of off-putting and I'm like well don't listen because there's lots of other people that actually like the sound of those I think they sound sweet but you haven't heard them in person and ramble 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 and thanks for watching and that was a, a fun project for me and uh, I used some wood glue to glue that that sole on because it's so art deco and I have the drone stocks which I'm pretty sure I won't have any trouble fitting those from well there's um, from uh, I have a particular brand of bagpipe bags that I use so I might try a different brand but you know I buy from eBay so I try, try to get what's the the least expensive and you know right now I haven't been working in four or five months so I'm not asking for money I got everything covered I'm just saying I had to be careful what I choose and that's just part of it so anyway thanks for watching and uh, to, to the person who requested this thanks for requesting it because um, I'm really happy with the way they sound and once I figure out we get some decent drones for them so that I can fit uh, the tuning chambers at the correct position for the tuning which it, it's kind of inconsequential but it's just something that I like to you know two fingers you know, or whatever and so anyway thanks for requesting it I appreciate it I hope that anybody who's watching this has learned a little bit of something from this video um, so I'm gonna do my 440 Pakistani pipes next which I really really want to do and that's gonna be with the Pakistani channel that I know works and I know how to tune that one and so maybe we'll do a, a tune-off between those two and then I have my really sweet sounding uh, Pakistani uh, drones that um, well I need to redo the setup on that so I got things planned row it row and row and in between there you might see a couple of car videos but I enjoyed doing that and you know like I think I said at the beginning you know if there's a tune that you want to hear with a different set of pipes the, the tune has to be a tune that I've already played but if you want to hear that tune on a specific set of pipes even the practice pipes then don't be afraid to ask because I, it gives me a reason to be creative and then I can kind of give back to you guys for watching what I'm doing and uh, I'm always learning and I, I might try a couple of simple p brocks and you know there's people around me who play the pipes and I'll probably have to take some private lessons um, but we'll see how it works because I'll have when I get back to work I will have Thursdays and Sundays off so it, and, and I work nights because that's my natural element okay done with the ramble I'm happy with those pipes all right have a good one bye howdy y'all um, I couldn't resist because uh, I've been you know working on stuff all day and uh, I found some more drone drone reads that's the good thing um, <clears throat> I'm not ready um, I'm I tuned the Chinese pipes up and the, the drones pitch so low I've got all of the drone reads um, their balance tones are um, bottomed out and I've had to raise the pitch and um, I've got the reeds set so that they're, they're pitched so high 
I hate relieving good reads, but that, and this is a medium Abador read in the Chanter. I'm not going to play it yet tonight because I'm trying to ease the read by just playing it. But these pipes pitch so low compared even to the, the Pakistani Blackwood Chanter that I have. Um, I've had to lower, <clears throat> I've had to tape the Chanter to pitch. This is a... a uh, first for me, um, I've had to pitch, well, except for what, with the small pipes, okay, the, the parlor pipes and stuff. So I've had to pitch a low chanter that I used to have to use drone extender extenders on for my other set of pipes. Um, I've had to pitch the chanter down. So um, they're going to be a, a either a horror or a, a treat but right now I'm just I need to play the read in that takes two or three days I don't want to shave it because I want the read to last as long as possible and when I start shaving I what happens is the read eases itself and and then I have a read that I can barely blow on and it shuts off <clears throat> but right now the drone reads on this are pitched so they're bottomed out and they're all the way up um, that they if I put the slightest amount of uneven pressure on them they they shut off just like this now my drum runs are sitting out right now and I don't like that because those are those are my quasi favorite uh, uh, Pipes, or those are the ones I'm the most sent sentimental about. Um, so anyway, uh, the I haven't taken the numbers off, but I just wanted to do a final update on it. And um, yeah, they they pitch really low, and I can almost guarantee there's a lot of people that won't like them. I've done the best I can do for tuning right now because. Um, of the reed and uh, let's see one two three four five five notes are taped and the other ones are the highest notes uh, let's see a I don't even know the note names anymore I just play the pipes so okay I need to re-educate myself to be sound smarter don't tell anybody but um well, even look at the drones on the, these. Uh, the drones pitch so high that... I don't know if you can see them properly. The tenors are almost bottomed out to pitch. To, to pitch the drones up to a chanter that pitches super low and everything is so um i played them down in the basement my cats came all the, downstairs to protect me and they wanted to come up and make sure i was okay now and everything like that cats most cats would split and go the other way so um <laughs> I don't know. They're all relaxed now, huh, kitty? I'm getting a dirty look from Zena. She's the little black one. Okay, cat. Yeah, that's a real dirty look. So, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't want to lock them in. So, anyway, be prepared for something completely different when I get comfortable with them and get them played in. Um... I don't, I don't want to leave my drum runs out, you know, but they need to be played. And those pitch low, but they don't pitch low compared to the, these. And then, uh, so anyway, when I, I get the <clears throat> 440s, I'm going to call them 440s. Those are easy to set up. The 40, 440 Pakistani pipes that the... the antique chalice pipes 
they tune with themselves and everything and I can use normal drone reads in them and they, they pitch almost ex right where they are. Now they don't like to pitch high to, you know, 500 hertz. But uh, anyway, I just had to update, update that. The, I mean, they work and I haven't had a chance to play them in so that, you know, because I need to adjust the hemp so that everything's correct. And then I had to, to relearn to play them because the drone reeds are 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 pitched. They're bottomed out. Bottomed out means they're at the they're all the way up against the drone, which to they're bottomed out, but they're going upwards. It's a a world of opposites. And then I got the the drone blades are so short to 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 so that I can pitch, so that I can actually tune. That's the hard part, is just the tuning. But they um, they definitely have a sound. Um, so if I do decide to, well, I'm gonna figure out what to do with these pipes because they are definitely 1,000% unique. Uh, they're virtually indestructible. Um, I'll probably take them out busking just to see what the public response is to them. Because the, uh, these are as low pitched as I've ever heard pipes get for Scottish style pipes. So and I've, I'm excited and I have trepidation at the same time. Because I like to tune to the harmonic and while well, you know, I, I can keep repeating myself, I have to wait for the chanter read to settle out. And then I can decide if I want to raise the chanter read. I've already raised it once. And um, they're just crazy. It's I don't know how to explain it. So anyway, thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you want to hear a certain set of pipes on, on a tune that I've already played, don't be afraid to, to leave a comment and ask. Because I'll, I'll do what I can to accommodate you and thanks for watching and see i get excited over stuff like that this is like drag racing when i do tuning on a car and then i have an improvement or something changes but it's like running slower and getting better miles per hour through the tracks so something changed and you know et uh, elapsed time in the quarter mile use the indication of torque in miles per hour is an indication of horsepower. And when things go crosswise for no reason, then you want to figure out why in the heck it did it. So, you know, um, these are hot rod. Well, these are tractor pull pipes. Okay. I'll put it that way. They got, they got the, all the brute, brute, uh, what's that? What's the term? Uh, Ruta Fortini. They're, they're something completely different. I can guarantee that you have never heard anything like this. Um, that could be good or that could be bad. But I like weird stuff <clears throat> like that. Um, so anyway. Uh, I, I gotta go and do my editing and stuff like that. And thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, my cats. Um. Uh, did not because they're worried about me being attacked by the what one two three four five legged octopus that's the end bye